I mean, usually the Reno Jackson stuff should be really bad against Druid because Druid is actually um, taking advantage of the Reno Jackson um, ability. I'm not exactly taking advantage, but the Reno Jackson ability is good if it heals for 20 or 25 and against Druid it's exactly the thing you cannot do. The reason why you cannot do it against Druid is because Druid can simply burst you down even if you're at 20 life. So you probably need to heal with Reno Jackson already at 15 or something. Yeah. And that makes Reno Jackson, of course, way worse. Okay, so here we have two options uh, from Rado's side. It's like, well, actually, uh, here it does have more than two options. But he should simply play Living Roots and Lepanum, both of them. No, or uh, perhaps not. No, Living Roots is fine. No, it's fine. He, he can do that. And then it goes into possible Innovate Shredder. I don't mind that either. Yeah. Also makes sense. Um. Mm, I see a mind control tech incoming. This will be so important, this mind control tech. The mind control tech could simply steal a 1 1, but the mind control tech could also simply steal. <laughs> Like, yeah, you, you see it yourself. Oh, Flame Juggler first. Oh my god, this is so insane. Flame Juggler first, yeah. Oh my god, this is so insane. And it hits. Oh, the Shredder. And now, oh! Mm. Seek. Okay, the 2 1. Okay, that was acceptable. <laughs> nah, that was. I mean, yeah. I mean, if the MC tech would have stolen either this or this, the game would have been over. And now we are still playing, so it's pretty good. Yeah, the aggressive druid I really don't know. Like so often, you just run out of cards and things like that. For example, now yeah, keep on this, killing it with the one-one, makes a lot of sense. Face and face, yeah. Nourish even, yeah. Cool. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, Xixu here, I mean, you see it yourself, right? I mean, he's at 14, so he will have a hard time to stabilize. Depending on what comes out, then there is the 4 3. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's so. <laughs> the 4 3 is so good here. It's so good. It's so incredibly good. Yeah, knife juggler, like perfect curve, like not nah, perfect curve, but yeah, knife juggler, like Lebanon shape shift, but forget about the curve. I mean, it's like anything for four mana would have been better, but anything or for five mana. But it's good. The knife juggler is of course a good draw. We don't have to talk about that. I'm wondering whether Radu should not take the keeper here with the one damage. There are reasonable arguments to be made for that. Yeah. If you would have dead the one damage on the keeper, the keeper would be dead now. And that's for one damage. Like yeah I mean I don't want to say about mis yeah. That was perhaps a small misstep, right? I mean it was not that unlikely. On the other hand it's also one more damage in case if there is swipe, there is no swipe. And if it's no swipe it's one life against a two one. Of course also two damage in his face, but that really doesn't matter here. So it's really like one life against a 2-1 on the board, and I really cannot see that being worth it. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, okay, interesting. Yeah, now he can play Lothep. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty practical. And if Xixu actually draws the spell, his hand is also dead. That's so insane. That's so insane. <laughs> Some yeah, okay, well, what some Yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Hey, this is insane, guys. Kixo needs to face tank the 2 2, getting back to 4 life. And Sylvanas has to trade into Lothab. It's so insane. Without any value. Yeah, it's the only play. Some which have attack, face tank the 2 2, and Sylvanas has to. Hmm. Like Sixo has balls, balls of steel, but uh, you th really think this is better? Okay, so what should rather do? Rather should shape shift, shape shift the one one and to take face with Lothab, setting up for the next turn lethal. That's that's what's good here. Yeah, it's next turn lethal. Shape shift onto the slime five five goes face savage co uh, combat and keeping in the hand next turn lethal. Unless some some miracle occurs, and the miracle being some fear protector, it's pretty good. Yeah, there's the Jeeves. Don't ask me about the Jeeves, guys. I have no clue what the Jeeves is doing in this deck. But um, yeah, there's the protector, and that's pretty good. What are the living wolves doing? Okay. No, shape shift, face. No, interesting guys, interesting. It's very close. It's very, very close everything. G is being a completely dead card, BGH being a completely dead card. And we have the Druid of the Saber, and that's gonna do it, guys. That's gonna do it. I mean, like, probably next turn. Yeah, I mean, that's gonna do it with the stats. I mean, like, it's uh, that's gonna do it latest next turn. Yeah, to be honest, I was thinking it's gonna do it right away, but <laughs> yeah, I, I overlooked the. Guy, but but the, the stats is good enough for next turn. Like to kill next turn if there is no top deck from Sixo, which apparently there hasn't been. Yeah. Okay, so that makes it one zero for the druid, but it was also not that surprising. Yeah. Actually, it was closer than we thought, right? And what was something what we wondered about? Right, there was this uh, play with the Sylvanas. That was an interesting one. So Xixu really refused to actually trade Sylvanas. Um, if he would have done so, he would have still stayed at a higher life count. It was an interesting decision. I don't know. Like Sixu probably went for the more rewarding but also more punishing play. Definitely an option. Okay, so we see Sixus threw it again, this time against Rados, mid-range Paladin. Usually mid-range Paladin should outvalue a standard Druid. Um, I don't have to tell you how that looks against a Highlander Druid. Yeah, if mid-range Paladin already outvalues uh, um, standard Druid, it will be even more so against a Highlander Druid, especially if the Highlander Druid also runs heal and Reno Jackson being heal. So Radu being definitely favorable here, favorite here. Ten percent favorite, perhaps fifty, uh, perhaps even more. Probably a twenty percent favorite. I really don't see what should happen uh, in order for Kixu to win. I mean, the Sorison could be a start, but I, I can really not see it. What we see is okay. There's a peacekeeper not to get overrun at the beginning. There's a true silver for a uh, certain kind of threats to be handled. Good quartermaster is not doing much here, but it's not doing much. So actually, Rado's hand is quite bad. Shape 
shield the mini bot also not really in time, but it's okay. I mean, it's not that bad. At least it gets rid of the early aggression. There will be Thorison. But Thorison actually is counting basically nothing, right? I mean, also keep in mind that, like, usually, I don't even know whether there are two ancient of lores in this deck. I would probably guess there is only one. And that's tremendous, guys. That's tremendous. Because if you think about it, ancient of lore is so important, also, especially for things like this, like Thorison and stuff. Okay, but there is now the trade insane value against Thorison. And Xyx you're really getting completely outvalued here. Having like uh, a mana source, a shredder, shade, BGH. All of all very low, very low impact cards. On the other hand we have Rado which actually who actually has already the weapon online. Can use it now and then can master. Really insane. And master also being very strong here anyways because of the quartermaster and we also see that Kixo actually doesn't have like the doesn't have the swipe in the hand to simply handle it in an easy way so I wouldn't be surprised to see rather attacking yes exactly the the aspirant and then simply playing master into minion up Kixo will then be able to clear two of those minions but the quartermaster will come down to buff three uh, what? Well, um, yeah, m p perhaps it's viable, but yeah, Rado was playing around swipe, I guess. Just saying, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. Rado is saying, okay, I want to wait till turn seven, and then turn seven, I want to coin out into master, into quartermaster to get three tokens. So that was the consideration. Like, does my opponent have swipe or not? That was the consideration. Like, with a master and token up, he would have had four minions. Uh, let's say uh, Kixu would have been able to kill two. Then Rado could have next turn actually produced a minion and quartermaster also for three. So, I guess, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter too much. Yeah. Both plays being definitely a possibility. And now that's definitely uh, what Rado just played. Waiting for the master and to coin quartermaster and just getting the win here. We see Starlack incoming, <laughs> but Starlack is like so bad, like as a standalone. Yeah, Starlack being obviously way worse than Feugen and obviously also much, much worse than Bose. So yeah, that's that. But there is already the Reno Jackson <laughs> in six or cent. Potentially being able to heal the full amount of three life at the very moment. Yeah, both into Master for Battle, Big Quarter Master, Clearing the Shade. Yeah, it's looking good. Life is good on the top with the Quarter Master and uh, all the minions rushing in. Uh, yeah, some fuel protector. Yeah, that game is probably over. There's even the lay on hands. Or really doesn't have to K here. Uh, he simply uh, replenishes his life, draws three cards. Board still being completely in his favor. Um, Rado should probably not attack this Shredder, but simply go face with everything. There's really no reason not to do that. The Shredder is actually <laughs> stronger probably if he died be than before. Yeah. Not even sure whether Belcher is not the better play here. The reason? Yeah, because Belcher... Well, probably after the Belcher, Xixxu would have even gotten lower and then he could have also played Bruno Jackson. I think both things being a possibility. I mean, obviously the Belcher is also quite weak because it <laughs> the slime also gets slaughtered from this and stuff like this. We see a second Quartermaster, okay. Well, that's painful. We see... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of dough. 
do you say it's a lot of dough? Yeah, I don't know what you say. But yeah, that's that's pretty sick. Pretty sick, sick, insane. So this the end scene of lore. No, shape shifting that to death. Eight, eleven, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Yeah, I guess after that you can simply concede. Nope. And that's also what happens. So Radu actually getting 2-0. And actually going into the last round of... Um, no, into the last round, but into the potential last game of the match. Getting him nearer to the possibility to securing his way to the into the top eight of the Hearthstone Champions League. We have Xixos Reno Jackson Warrior, which is also a control warrior against Radu's patron. So what are the odds? No, they are pretty bad. We already knew that uh, know that right. So what what is actually with the patron? Warrior from Rado. What are what are the matchups? We have the matchup against the control warrior, probably pretty bad. Thirty percent perhaps? I guess. Then we have the matchup against Druid. Well that's probably a good one. Because the Druid is really slow. So against the Druid is really not that much about the heal, but rather about getting the patrons online. And then we have the matchup against the Highlander Warlock, which should probably be also not that great. But we'll see. Okay, so yeah, there's also already the Reno Jackson. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look good. <laughs> it definitely doesn't. But there is still no brawl. So perhaps, perhaps Radu can could go go all in actually. Perhaps Radu simply wants to go all in. Lotha doesn't have either. Perhaps, perhaps that's the key. Simply going all in with those patrons. Next turn then, this turn like whatever, doing, um, yeah, yeah, armor smith armor up, and next turn Rado will be able to attack Lothab, and produce a lot of patrons, and a lot means an awful lot, like, a very awful lot, with a, an orange in the double world you simply get six patrons, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you don't attack the guy. What? Hmm. Yeah, okay. I mean, this uh, uh, this uh, play stays uh, mana efficient actually, so that's that's a benefit like of this play that that it stays mana efficient. On the other hand, <laughs> they are playing so quickly, guys. <laughs> Let me just look at this. I mean, is this casino or like what the fuck is going on? Okay, but this is actually very clever from Rad. Now he's actually holding on of this patron to be be able to play a patron in a rage, whirlwind, bad rage turn, and this will potentially crush um, Xixu because 
it's so much it's so much uh, uh, it's so many patrons and so many cards just look at this now I think Radu because Xixu doesn't have brawl could actually yeah like it's it's a big gamble but I think this could lead to victory here yeah. in knowledge into whirlwind battle rage insane insane guys and a lot of armor just as a collateral getting for patrons too insane just look at that Payum, yeah hand replenished pium 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 yeah look at this you can even do another patron combo if he wants <laughs> just look at that guys so silly what's Kixos answer here there is none it's just so unpleasant everything such a bad situation there must be execute Dr. Boom and he has to kill one of those patrons but also Dr. Boom we know how good Dr. Boom is against <laughs> mass patrons right he's pretty bad because um, Rado will now be in a position where he can simply get new patrons so the 3-3 three three should probably attack the 1-1 one one. he can slam first hmm? or should he even nah probably it's okay but the 3-3 three three can now attack the 1-1. One one. Hmm. Yeah, doing this first is fine too. No, he doesn't want to deploy the patron before, no, I don't think I don't think so. Attack attack whirlwind is a possibility. I don't like it too much though to be honest because like if you uh, I don't know but yeah I mean uh, obviously if he plays it like this he plays the patron first but the boom bots usually ooh ooh okay huh What's up here? If he does it, he goes to 15 <laughs> minus 12. Huh? It's exactly too late, I think. It's exactly too late. Look at that. If Sixo would play Baron Gedon here, we would eventually, after the armor up, go to 15 life. And he would face down four patrons, bringing himself to three. So if, if the opponent would have only one weapon, he would die. So he cannot do that. But what, what can he actually do? Reno Jackson also not being a real answer. So there must be the Sludge Belcher into Armorsmith into, into uh, um, Armor Up. And endure another round of patrons. And we also know how good the Slime is against the Belchers. <laughs> against the patrons. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah. So what can rather do here? I mean the patrons. I mean also the armor smith. The armor smith is also super bad against the patrons, right? Baron Gedon really being the last last resort. So I would not be surprised. Yeah, exactly. Like we see this and this. Yeah, Radu uh, correctly keeps on the um, the healthy patrons. So that's a really strong play, especially against stuff like Baron Gedon. Because he knows, yeah, he knows that his board is strong enough anyways. So that's like the perfect play. Here, putting in the Ecolite. Not putting the Pirate. Huh? No, I'm not putting the Pirate because... <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, it doesn't matter in this situation. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. Probably you can even put the Pirate. Probably it's, it's good. Probably. I just wanted to say perhaps you should not instant do it, but perhaps consider whether it could be a consideration not to do it. Sixteen seven. Interesting. Yeah, 
one of those has to go into Reno Jackson. I would probably think that the Ecolite definitely also will run into the Reno Jackson. Ecolite and one of those patrons, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. Uh. Uh, okay, he does have two executes, right? Hmm. That's a close one. That was a close one. But yeah, it won't matter. Like, Rado amassed so much edge over the turns that it should be nearly impossible to still lose that. Rado can actually simply go face with everything and there is nothing to be done wrong here. Like, all go face. This also deals damage to Sixo every turn. Um, Rado will simply also want to play the weapon and go face. Okay. Or is it already lethal? Yeah, it's already lethal. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so that was a pretty clean 3 0 sweep. I'm really curious uh, <laughs> whether uh, this is this means that Reno Jackson decks are inferior. Okay, thanks very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed that today. And um, yeah, it will be also. No, I can hear. Okay, cool. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. And. Um, yeah, this will be my last day of casting, so um, yeah, tomorrow, because tomorrow I will be playing myself. Um, I will check stuff out. I hope you uh, enjoyed the reallocation of me actually casting stuff and tournaments, and yeah, I see you around on my stream. Have a nice one, guys. Bye.